I was absolutely disappointed. I was absolutely disappointed in um, performance at different points in high school, but my disappointment never changed my expectation. My disappointment never changed what my, my belief in them and what I knew that they were capable of. That was what they put in paper was different from what mm -hmm. I clearly believed and what they had um, through at different points that they had shown they were capable of doing certain things. And so, okay, you you know, you didn't do as hot, you're making this decision that you're not going to come um, go on to school. Well, I'm inserting myself in your life and we're going to come up with um, another option for you. you know, the fact that he did that, this, I said, yeah, whatever whatever this leads me to, I gotta, I gotta do my best. I, I gotta knock this out of the park because he invested his time to be when he didn't have to. He could have been doing something better with his time. I'm Nathaniel Bozart, and this is Wide Ruled, Brain Roots podcast on the past and present of equality in education. On today's episode, we follow Ricardo Carter and Trayvon Kirkpatrick through their mentorship with Mr. Ricardo Neal at Eastern High School and beyond. Our conversation takes place in Washington, D.C. I gotta say, I'm really excited about today's story. But first, a reminder that you can support Wide Ruled by visiting patreon.com slash wide ruled podcast, where you can become a patron for as little as $2 per month. Visit patreon.com slash wide ruled podcast. You had this mentorship program mm -hmm. that you were sort of spearheading at Eastern? Along with my colleagues, I refuse to take credit as, as, okay. as a singular person. I'm responsible for it, but I had um, um, some colleagues that are near and dear to me who committed to this, to the work of investing, uh, particularly in young men, young men of color. Mm -hmm. um, given everything that we deal with in the world, we knew that they could do great things yeah. with a deep level of commitment from us. In the 2010-2011 school year, Eastern High School had been phased out, so it only had a senior class. After that senior class graduated that summer, the school was renovated, got some new staff, and it got new curriculum. And then that, then that fall, it restarted with only a freshman class and added another grade each subsequent year, one at a time. So the school culture was sort of contemplative. Everyone was sort of taking stock of the way things were. We noticed that, one, the young women at the school, they were running circles around the boys in terms of doing well academically. Mm -hmm. And we knew that we had guys who were capable. And given the presence of black males in the building, we felt like we had a responsibility to put our arms around the guys to sort of help lift them up. Mm -hmm. And so myself, Mr. Nash, Mr. Douglas, Mr. Turner really went into the work. Mr. Tatras, like really, we hunkered down and thought about what we could do yeah. um, to support these young men. Awesome. The program was called 100 More. But to be honest, I couldn't get Mr. Neal to talk much about it because there was something else he wanted to focus on, which we'll get to in a bit. The two other people sitting in the room with me, Ricardo and Trayvon, are mentored by Mr. Neal. So how did how did the three of, how did the three of you meet? Because you all did you all meet at East High School? Eastern, yes. Eastern High School. Yeah. And um, how we met, both these boys got in trouble. Ooh. So that's how the relationship started. I have a story. Yeah, but it was I was I was hanging with these group of guys. Some were family, some were like friends, close friends I knew. And I guess out of the group, Mr. Neal just looked at me and was like, I don't need to be with them. So every day he came to the cafeteria. He was just staring at me. I'm like, who's this dude? I don't know him. So I was like, mm. Then one day, um, I got sent to his office. I think somebody told me to come to his office. I don't remember who. I came in his office. To, to Mr. Neal's to office. To Mr. Neal's office. And he said, I don't think he knew my name then. I, got, I think he, did you know my name? Most likely. Most likely, he probably did know my name. There were 600 kids. Yes, so he was like, name. I think he, he came and said, Ricardo, before I even knew his name was that. And I guess he, I sat down, I was talking to him for a little bit. He said, you seem like a nice kid. He said, you say you seem like a nice kid. And I was like, 
that's I am. He said, you shouldn't be hanging with them type of people. And I'm like, nah, they friends, they cool. And he's like, I don't think so. If you like branch away from yourself, I can succeed you succeeding to what you're doing now. Because in ninth grade, I was uh, immature, ninth grader, didn't really pay attention. Didn't really do my work like that, but so I that's so he came. We was talking for a little bit. After I left his office, I'm not say I branched off immediately, but I was still hanging with them just a tight a bit because it was still family. I was like some of my family members was like in the little group we was in. Then like the next school year, boom, it's like two of them that's there now. So most of them left and didn't come back. So, that, that's what, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't remember like, um, like full conversations we had, but I just know I kept getting into it. My biology teacher was a story. Who was my favorite teacher hey, from Eastern Nile. <laughs> <laughs> but I kept getting into it with him, you know, ninth grade, immature, playing too much, didn't really want to do the work. Um, they just kept saying, go to Mr. Neal. Mr. Neal, I'm like, I don't even know who Mr. Neal is. He used to come get me sometimes. Mr. Story called. Always called Mr. Neal. Like he could have called any administrator, but he just kept calling Mr. Neal. And then, next thing you know, it just I just kept. I just like as the more I got to know Mr. Neal as a person, it just like I had to listen eventually. Like had to listen to him eventually. Mm -hmm. I think the key word was um, the immaturity. Yeah, yeah. That was what they, it was. I, <laughs> they I were immature. Yeah. Okay. And I knew that. I knew that they were brilliant young men who could succeed. In many schools, Ricardo and Trayvon would have been sent to the office, reprimanded, maybe suspended after multiple infractions, and maybe passed through the system quietly. Through the concerted efforts of Mr. Neal and other faculty and administrators of color at Eastern High School, this wasn't going to be the case for these men. The program, it's called 100 More, More stands for Mentoring others, raising expectations. The guy to really get to know people. We had like, the, like these barbecues. They like the school always had some like events, and we get to meet meet these different people. So I guess that's how like the relationship we we all had, just meeting the staff and everything, like really grew. Cause mm -hmm. we had all these events that we was in and we were doing, and we was enjoying them. And then the staff would join it too. That's how you get to just talk to people, networking. You know what I'm saying? So it would be the whole school. But then, like you would take that opportunity. Not the entire That's school, cool. not just, for the entire I'm program. I'm gonna say like the uh, the mentoring program. Okay. I had a group, the Shakur Robinson group, where I met with young men, about ten to twelve young men, every Friday through an advisor program, debating social issues, getting them to write. But there was also the one-on-one -on -one, um, piece where, if they're during advisory or some of the time, they could come to my office to talk. We would host um, symposiums. Um, let's say. Breakfast events, or we do holiday events. Um, in terms of, we do holiday events. We had these guys. Ricardo was on the team. A basketball tournament. Um, we two year champs. You know, so that you know, so they would be on my team, and you know, other folks would have different teams. We had an end of year ceremony at each at the end of the year as the young men are graduating. We do a rites of passage piece, and so it was very much a part of the community. They know over time they knew that ties of bond will come up at the end of the year, the holiday um, breakfast, um, a end of year cookout, the basketball tournament, visit the Kennedy Center, which is a cultural um, a cultural event or we may do uh, a more serious forum, or we may bring in um, you know, men from the community to come outside and do fist bumps at the um, beginning of the school. Like, so it was very visible in terms of the, the work that we were doing. There are a host of activities um, that we had um, in place um, for the students. 100 More was pretty hands-on. It almost functioned like a fraternity or an after school club. So like four years through high school, you had Mr. Neal inputting into you and, and mentoring you. What was that like? What impact did it have on you? You want to go first or I'll go first? Yeah, it just, it just gave me like more confidence in myself, like to know that they, the people, the men in the building uh, believed in me. So it, it just made, helped me believe in myself and they brought, they brought the best out of me regardless of any situation. It just made me, um, always wanted to do well, do better. And it also made me want to be a mentor to somebody. Uh, my experience, uh, just just knowing that Mr. Neal was by my side, like 
anything. I ain't want to let him down. If it was grades or anything, so like when I'm even in the, when I wasn't even in the classroom doing my work, I'm thinking I'm missing Neil. Like I don't want to let him down. You know what I'm saying? Cause he invested so much in me, so I did not want to let him down. And then our relationship just grown. So I'm proud, proud, proud of Mr. Neil and proud of myself because I've grown a lot from my life to now. So I'm just appreciative that I met him. So again, and this is why I'm so excited about this story. Ricardo and Trayvon could have just graduated high school, and the mentorship just ended right there. Instead. Mr. Neal has continued to invest in them. Oh, um, you'll hear some sirens here. We were recording in downtown D.C., so what are you going to do? The big question is what happens after high school? Uh, what options do, do we have available for the students? And so in conversations and, heard, and, and hearing about this program, I immediately thought about my boys. The program Mr. Neal heard about was the Leading Men Fellowship, an initiative of D.C. public schools executed in partnership with the Literacy Lab. And this is what Mr. Neal had been so eager to talk about. The program would train and deploy men of color who had just graduated from D.C. schools to be literacy tutors for pre-K students in D.C. schools. When this opportunity came up, it was the perfect opportunity in my mind because it would be doing something constructive um, for their own development for, as well as for the, the students, the, the, the kids in pre-K 3, pre-K 4, that they could benefit from it as well. And so I came through and I started thinking about students in my building who could benefit from it. And then I had an opportunity to engage with the staff here um, at the Literacy Lab as well as a district central office who partnered with the, with the program. And it, that experience with the staff at the Larissa Lab um, was just amazing in terms of the care they took um, in evaluating the young men, their development of the program. It gave me confidence that my guys, my boys, would be placed in an environment where they would be taken care of. and so. After having that experience, I, you know, definitely would reach out to more young men about joining the program. So that's how that started. Mr. Neal said not every high school student is ready for college right after receiving their high school diploma. But neither can every high school student afford to go backpacking around the world, the white, middle-class dream of the peregrine student. The Literacy Lab had long been training AmeriCorps volunteers, typically after graduating from college, to tutor pre-K students towards literacy, knowing that gains or setbacks in the early pre-K years are magnified as a child gets older. The Leading Men Fellowship added another layer to the Literacy Lab's proven strategy by addressing the dearth of male teachers of color in the classroom. Get this, in pre-K, only 2% of all teachers are males of color. When, they, when the opportunity came up, Mr. Neal showed me. To me, I'm like, ah, I didn't even give it a chance. I didn't read into it or anything. He just, he came to me, said, this is a nice little program. I think he wanted me. He kind of triggered me in. I never told anybody. I, he used to, he said, bribe them. He bribed yeah. me. I can, I, can, <laughs> I can tell you the story. He said, I will become a gym teacher. Now, he said, I will help kids. With, with basketball. <laughs> that was his, his thing. I was like, bat? So I get to do You're basketball? You're not being accurate, but I can't, I'll, I'll wait my baby, turn. I'll, that was a good baby. Yeah. <laughs> You're not being accurate, but go ahead, tell your story the way you want to tell your story. He baby. told me that it's, you can play, you can be able to help kids, teach them basketball, coach basketball. So I was like, hmm, for real? Because I wanted to go to college and, and hoop, you know? So, but I just, I thought about it at that time. And I'm like, Mr. Neal came to me about the program. I was like, ah, let me read into it. So it sounded good, and plus I'm coming out of high school, and I want to make money, and this program made money. So I, I, I signed up for it. It was the best choice I made, because I'm here now doing this, so. Can I just intervene a second? So when I told Ricardo, um, <laughs> here is a program, he likes basketball. I said, look, you probably could play basketball with the kids, whether it's um, recess or stuff like that. I didn't tell you your entire day was going to be basket playing basketball with the kids. I threw basketball out of there because I knew that it would get him interested um, in it. And, um, but I, 
but it, I did not represent the program for what it wasn't. I just want to be clear. Yeah. Be clear. And, and, but that's his but, story. But, but and, and, you just got to put it in there. Yeah. And then, you know, he took it. As it the way got his attention. Did, did it not get your attention? It definitely got my attention got when he attention. said it was basketball. <laughs> I'm like, hey, okay. I'm with it. Signed up for it. But I mean, it was the best decision I made. And what about for you? I mean, has it proved to be a good decision? Yeah, it definitely was the best decision I made so far in my life. He sent me the link, and I um, he told me Ricardo was doing. I said, well, "Yes, I'm not gonna be in this by myself. At least I'm, I know somebody who's gonna be doing it with me. So if I struggle, we we gonna be right there together." Yeah. Um, but I ran into it a little bit, and I did the uh, application. The next day, Ashley called me, the founder, uh, one of the founders of the Leadership Lab. She called me and told me that I had an interview. Mr. Neal's office the next day. So I'm like, Mr. Neal, he he knows some Spot people. On, like I said, Mr. Neal knows some people, so. I know. I said I, I believe. I trusted Mr. Neal. I knew he wasn't going to lead me into the wrong direction. I knew this is this is where I needed to be. Ricardo and Trayvon were a part of the inaugural cohort of leading men fellows. There were ten of them, and six of those ten were from Eastern High School, funneled into the fellowship from the 100 more mentorship. Next came training. I got accepted to the program and I was ready for training. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know it was going to be 10 leading men, so I'm thinking it was going to be 10 of us. Got to the hotel and I realized it was way more than 10 of us. It was about two, 200. The training was with all the literacy lab tutors from across the country. So as of fall 2017, there are 230 literacy lab tutors coaching kids in classrooms in D.C., Baltimore, the greater Richmond area, and in Kansas City, Missouri. It was the whole literacy lab, all the literacy lab tutors, not just the leading mentors. So I, I still didn't know what to expect. They split us up into groups. We were learning new songs to sing. We had to sing, sing songs every day, learning about the schedule we was going uh, to have. We learned about different interventions we was going to do with the kids. Uh, assessments. Five assessments. There's five assessments we touched on, uh, which are um, picture name, alliteration, rhyming, test a lot of names, test a lot of sounds. Yeah. And we focus on them, uh, them, assessments, them, them assessments for kindergarten readiness. We feel like them are the areas that they need to be kindergarten ready. As for us, to like just coming out of high school mm -hmm. and most of them that were in the miracle program are like oh, college graduates. Yeah. So we handled it quite well, but it was very beneficial. Yeah. Like it helped us. So we didn't go our first day in the classroom, not prepared, we were very prepared of what to do when we got in the classroom. So it was very beneficial. That's good. Shout out to Kimberly. Yeah. That initial week of institute, like intensive five days, but in addition to that, um, there are coaches that, instructional coaches um, that are assigned to uh, the, the, the young men, Kimberly and Susan, uh, are assigned to the young men and they, they're observed. There's an internal coach, a teacher um, in the classroom that gives them support. They go and just assess the work that they're doing. In addition to that, there are uh, professional learning communities that happens monthly. As the year goes along, they continue, um, there's continued support for, for, for the men. So one week of intensive training, then ongoing supervision and training throughout the year the Literacy Lab is very scientific about the process and it collects data on each of their tutors and students in the classroom throughout the year. Mr. Neal said that the data showed that there was almost no difference in the positive impact that the fresh out of high school leading men fellows had versus the traditional college graduate Literacy Lab tutors. We test them, test them three times a year in the fall, winter, and spring. We have three different areas. Red is mean they are far from target. Uh, yellow means they are approaching target, and green means they are at or above target. And after we assess them each time, we take the the five the five that's, that had the lowest scores basically. So in the red, we had to take the five scores and we give them daily interventions, everyday interventions. They get read aloud, they get signed in, so they can be able to write write their name, um, letter form. And then in the month, we uh, progress monitor them to see how far they've grown. And if they've grown, they, they are able to move out of the caseload, but they still get a daily read aloud. We just move somebody else on that's, that was in the red that we didn't get to get the first time. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Neal wanted to emphasize the level of expertise and professionality that Ricardo and Trayvon and the other leading men fellows showed in their work. Their students made gains, while the fellows became experts on literacy and education. The fellowship is a one-year program, and that year ended in June of 2017. So I asked Ricardo and Trayvon, what was next? Yeah, I applied for, um, for a miracle. I so said, I'll be basically doing literacy lab again, but I'm just going to be at America working this time, not leaving me. And for what I'm doing next year, I'm definitely, definitely coming back to the literacy lab. I mean, it was a, it was no brainer for me. Just the work I did, and I, I know I'm like more advanced at it, so I had to come back. And plus, I wanted to see the kids, yeah. see more kids. I just, I just wanted to be around more kids, so I came back. It was a no brainer. So that's what I'm doing, literacy lab. Shout out to Literacy Lab. We love you guys. Can I just add one piece? And they will serve as mentors yes. to the new um, cohort. Oh, um, so, you guys, that, yeah, that's so you finally it. decided to let us be I, a mentor. No, you guys want no, It's important. Yeah, yeah. 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 Remember that first just, just, to let, just to let the new... <laughs> You're right. I said you the new, the new core, our, like how we went through this, how we gone like throughout we the school year. We was in the same too. position same as them, so... Guys just to get them our story of what we did with the program. There was a little ruckus there because that was the first time Ricardo and Trayvon had been told they would be mentoring the new leading men fellows. I asked them both if they envisioned themselves being in education long term. Uh, I, def- yeah. I definitely plan on being, being in education long term. Awesome. Well, I still don't, I still don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. And like it's, but the, but outside of this like the literacy lab like training us to become like professionals and just like f- pushing us towards education, like this program we got a lot of this program. Like I got to be on the plane for the first time when I went to Kansas City mm-hmm. and the comp they go to a conference. Uh, I went to South Carolina. I, like, I've been, I we got to travel. You went to Clemson University. Clemson University. Yeah. The conference. My you first college. So my first college visit. Like it's my first college visit. From a then different well right. outside of DC, yeah. outside of DC, my first college visit. I just they just got a lot. We get to go to the conference next year, Kansas City, and lead a That's session. Right. You guys are presenting next year. I guess for me, the respect that I have for the young men, um, the respect that I have for um, Lyrics to Lab and the team here, um, from Tom, team. Ashley, Nick. Um, Kimberly, the entire team that's really invested in, in these guys. And um, you know, I cannot forget our team at DCPS, Jen, Antoine, Antoine. and Edgar. Shout out to them too, man. They yeah, were big. Antoine, yeah, because Edgar. that's the, um, they've just really supported this program very deeply and they're champions of it. And you know, they're committed to seeing it continue beyond the time that it's funded. Um, you know, it's probably funding that comes through the, the public education okay. fund in the, in the city. And just hearing this, um, your audience, folks who are listening, you know, I, I would be remiss if I did not say how critical it was that the funding continues. And I'm hoping there's a movement to invest in um, this type of programming. Follow awesome. like what Mr. Neal was saying, it's like, it's, it's beneficial to us. Like, we're going to these different high schools and we're promoting the program now advocating the program mm. just like from our shoes that we out talking to these sophomores and juniors like we have something on Friday at the high school that we're going to to talk about getting people into the lead men so we're just trying to get more people just to spread get, the word s- spread the word and get the experience that we had I me too it's a career path like I didn't know why I was going to go out to high school I don't know what I had to do I had no type of plan I want to make sure that we create more leading men across the, the country because it, it, it says to us as a society that our young men of color, given the right condition, given the right opportunities, they're going to flourish. And Ricardo and Trayvon and Sakani and Chenier and Torin, they're proving it on a daily basis. And so that's the power of the work. It also, it also changes stereotypes because when you see a black male in education or in the school system or in the school period, you think of a gym teacher, a custodian, a, custodian, mm-hmm. a disciplinarian. You don't really see them in the classroom, especially in the pre-K class or, or, or early childhood education class. They have done an outstanding job in writing their own narrative. I'm like, that this, this is what we do 
we love, we educate, we care about our community. This is us. Like this is simply, you, it's just folks haven't seen this. That that narrative hasn't been written, right. and you know, often in the media, where. We're, yeah, what we're hearing is the cradle to prison pipeline. We understand that ha that, that happens, and I think what we're about doing is sort of flipping that script. Um, and you know, it's that that cradle all the way to the to, to college. Um, that pipeline is now defined differently. There's a, there's a pipeline, but. It's flipped in a different way. It's not to prison. It's to education. It's to, it's to doing something positive in their community. The second year of the Leading Men Fellowship has begun, and 10 new Leading Men Fellows are joining Ricardo and Trayvon at the Literacy Lab. Mr. Neal, Ricardo, and Trayvon hope the program will grow and spread to other cities. Mr. Neal is also hopeful that soon, Partnerships will be built with colleges so that leading men fellows get college credit for their work. This is an amazing program. It serves the fellows who are learning about their own greatness as they gain professional skills, and it serves the little kids they're teaching who reap exponential gains over time through this early investment. I'm Nathaniel Bozarth, and this has been Wide Ruled. Brain Roots podcast on the past and present of equality in education. You can support Wide Ruled by visiting patreon.com slash wide ruled podcast and pledging as little as $1 for every episode we churn out. No less helpful would be if you would share this episode with your friends and colleagues and rate us on iTunes. Wide Ruled is produced by myself along with executive producer Christopher Cook, music by Audioblocks. Thanks for listening and keep up the good fight. <laughs>